Hey guys, I'm Precious from White Coat Chronicles. Today I'll be making a video on how to get accepted to medical school and I'll be talking about some of my personal experiences and the steps that I took to getting an acceptance. Now of course everybody is different and there's not one straight path to medical school. Everybody has their own journey. But I'll be talking about some of the things that I feel are important to make you a strong applicant. So to start off, I was a cell and molecular biology major at Augusta State University. You should make sure you pick the major that's right for you. You don't have to be a science major to apply to medical school. So just choose whatever you're interested in. You know, if you love psychology or if you love sociology or if you love history, you should major in that. Just make sure you have all the required prerequisites for medical school. Those include general biology, general chem chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, and some schools are now requiring biochemistry. So choose the major that you're going to enjoy, but make sure you have all those required prerequisites. Next is shadowing. Medical schools like to see that you have some idea of what a doctor does on a daily basis and that you have some exposure to the clinical setting. So as an undergrad student, it can be hard to get shadowing experience, but um, I was able to shadow five different specialties. My first shadowing experience came the summer after my freshman year. Um, my sister, who's a nurse practitioner, was able to set me up with a general surgeon to shadow. All of my other shadowing experiences came from the teaching hospital that's affiliated with my school. So I would just call up um, some doctors and, you know, say I'm a pre-med student from Augusta State University looking for shadowing experience. Sometimes they would say yes and sometimes they would say that they don't have anything available. Um, also, through volunteering at the hospital in the emergency medicine department, I was able to form a shadowing experience with one of the doctors there. So sometimes you can even just volunteer in the hospital and through there just make a connection with the doctor and ask them to shadow. So you know, just make a couple calls. Some people may say yes, some people may say no, but it won't hurt to try. Try to at least get one or two shadowing experiences. And not even just for the application process, for you as a future medical student, it'll be nice to see some different specialties and maybe even develop an interest. So next is extracurricular activities. Medical schools like to see that you're not just a one-dimensional student, but that you can be well-rounded and involved in other things. So a few of the clubs that I was involved in was Black Student Union, the Biology Club, and African and Caribbean Club. So quality is always better than quantity, so get involved in what you're interested in. If you're offered an interview, you want to be able to talk about these experiences in a meaningful way. You don't want to just have a long list of all these clubs that you signed up for. Also, get involved early, your freshman year. Don't wait until your third year when it's time to apply and start joining these organizations. And try to get some leadership positions in these organizations as well. So the next thing is research. I had one semester of genetics research. Um, I just did simple things like PCR, and I honestly wasn't a huge fan of research. I was able to get the position through my genetics professor. And research isn't absolutely necessary, but with the missions getting more and more competitive every year, I feel like it'll be a nice addition to make you a stronger applicant. So if you have some interest, or even if you don't have an interest but just want that experience, you should try to reach out to some professors, make some emails, and see if you can get a research position. So next is good grades and MCAT score. I probably should have started with this one. These two things can either open or close some doors for medical school for you. So starting with, good, uh, with a good GPA, of course your freshman year, start off strong, make good grades. Um, medical schools look at two GPAs, that's your cumulative GPA and your science GPA. And they also like to see upward trends. So when it's time to apply and it's your third year, don't slack off then. Continue to make good grades from your freshman year to your senior year. Next is the MCAT. So this is a big hurdle for a lot of students applying to medical school. Um, a little bit about my MCAT experience. I took the exam the summer after my junior year. So during that summer, I was studying for the MCAT while also taking anatomy and physiology. Yeah, but I did it. Um, so I took the exam, I got my score back. I wasn't absolutely happy with my score, but I didn't take it again. I only took it one time. Um, I went ahead and applied with that score and I wasn't so down about my score because I knew that the rest of my application was strong so that one score wasn't going to hold me back. So it's important that if you have a low score you have other parts of your application that can bring your application up as a whole. You know one low score won't ruin you but of course try to make the best score possible. So if you have a lower MCAT you know you can make up for it with a higher GPA or vice versa. But if you have both a low MCAT and a low GPA, it is going to be harder and you need to make sure the rest of your application is that much stronger. 
So the MCAT is not something you can just sit down and say, okay, I'm gonna study for this in three weeks. This takes months of preparation, it takes planning, it takes scheduling, and make sure you really focus in and try to get a strong MCAT score because you don't want any doors for medical school to be closed for you because of that one score. So the next thing is your personal statement. This is your chance to really sell yourself to the admissions committee. You know, let them know who you are, make sure you stand out and really tell your story. This is something that they're going to see that they're going to see outside of like, you know, your good grades or your MCAT score. They can really, you know, see some personality in you as an applicant. So make sure it's strong, make sure you get to the point and make sure you let them know why you will be the best applicant. Next is recommendations. A strong recommendation can go a long way. So make sure you get recommendations from people who can really vouch for you. I got my recommendation from my academic advisor and from my genetics professor who I did research with and who I had two classes with. I also got a recommendation from the emergency medicine physician who I shot up with all four years of college. So when you're asking for recommendations, make sure you ask if they can write you a good recommendation. You know, they won't get offended by that because you don't want somebody that's going to just write you a generic recommendation because that's not going to do anything for you. So, you know, try to develop relationships with your professors early on as in like your freshman year and, you know, they can be somebody that you can reach out to for a recommendation. Also, when you reach out to them, make sure you give them a deadline and also give them either your resume, your CV and even your personal statements so they can add, you know, good touches to your recommendation. And finally, volunteer experience. This can either be volunteering in the hospital, like a clinical setting, or volunteering in the community. Again, medical schools like to see that you're a well-rounded student. And again, this is something that you shouldn't just do to add to your application. Do things that you're interested in. Like I volunteered at the Boys and Girls Club. So just show the admissions committee that you're involved in the community and that you like to give back. So that was just a summary of some of my undergrad experiences and some of the things that I feel are important to making you a strong and well-rounded applicant. So when you're applying or when you start your freshman year and you're on this pre-med journey, make sure you're documenting all of these experiences that you're having because when it's time to apply, you're not gonna remember every single thing that you did. So it'd be nice to have a document that you can just go back to and be able to fill in for your application. So remember, everybody is different and there's not one straight path to med school. Everyone has their own journey into getting into medical school. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you thought it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.